Welcome back. What I'm going to talk about in this video is how we can animate this robot arm to move over and pick up the ball and then sit it down somewhere else. But before we actually start keyframing any animation, what we want to make sure is that we've set up our frames per second as well as our playback speed so that we know that we're watching our animation in the correct time. And we can do that in Windows, Settings, Preferences, Preferences. We can also do that right here by changing the frame rate or this little red guy down in the corner that's kind of jogging. That also is the settings preferences. And you'll see under settings, we have this option for time as well as under the time slider, we have this frame rate option, playback speed, as well as start and end frames. So I like to change it right here under the time slider because I have all of these options that I need. 24 frames per second is the Maya default, and that's typically what we would use for film. And I'm going to change this to 30 frames per second, which is a little better used for digital content. Sometimes we'll actually even do it higher. When I change that, you're going to see that we now have these 1.25 values. And what's happened is that Maya has tried to offset the 24 frame per second keyframes to fit the 30 frame per second value. And all we need to do is just tell this to set back at a value of 1. And I'll have my animation at 150 frames. So that's probably more than enough time to show you how this is going to work. And now down here in my time slider, I can bring this back to a value of 1. As far as the playback speed is controlled, I currently am looking at 30 FPS by 1, which means it's going to play back at real time. If this is set to play every frame, then your computer will process it as fast as it can which means it's probably going to process this animation far too quickly. We would want to use this if we're trying to bake in cloth or particle simulation or dynamic simulation or something that typically won't be able to run at real time. And so we'd leave it at play every frame so that we get an accurate calculation. But for animating movement, we want to make sure that we're watching it in real time. So I'm going to get those set up and then just tell it to save. Now what I need to do is start to keyframe values. And Maya will allow us to keyframe almost every channel and every option. Not everything, but almost everything in Maya can be keyframed. And you can do that by selecting an object. And then in the channel box, you can right click on something and key that selected channel. And this will key this specific channel for that specific object. Another way that we can do this is to select an object and hit the S key. And the S key will key every available open channel. And that will actually create what's known as static channels, or channels that have no change in value that didn't necessarily need keyed, but were keyed anyways. And these aren't necessarily the best ever. We can delete them by coming up to Edit, Delete by Type, Static Channels. And so what I like to do is keyframe everything. And then when I'm done, I'll go back and delete those channels. So I'm going to start by drag selecting all of my animation handles, make sure that I'm on frame one, and then I'm going to hit the S key. And now every channel on every available object has been keyed. Then I'll move forward in time. I'll move to frame 30, which is a second. And I will position my robot where it can pick this object up. So I'm going to need to translate it forward. And then I'm also going to need to rotate some of these values so that the robot arm can actually reach this ball. So give me a second here to get it dialed in. I'm going to translate it a little bit more. And maybe a little bit further down here. Something like that. And then I also need to make sure I open the jaws up so that I can actually grab this. And if you remember back in the last video, I set a driven key on this head here, clamp control, and that's going to allow me to open and close this jaw. And I'm just going to open it up to the point that it looks like it's grabbing it, but not actually crushing into it, and also not any space that looks like it's not touching. So something like that right there. And then now since we're on a new frame, we're going to drag select all of our animation handles again and hit S. And so I have an animation now that starts at frame one in this vertical position. And then I move to the right and I am in this position right here. All right, 
So what we're gonna do is we're gonna use kind of a shell game to move the ball. We're gonna have one ball here on the large box. We're gonna have one ball that stays in the jaws of the robot and then we're gonna have another one in the last position where we want to sit it down and we're just gonna show hide ball one, ball two, and ball three when we want you to see them. Now you actually can set parenting constraints, pose positions, and then turn the parenting on and off, but it gets a little tricky and sometimes it's a bit glitchy. So I find that this is a simpler method and it's pretty much glitch free. What we wanna do though is make sure that the rotation values stay consistent. So I wouldn't wanna duplicate the ball three times, put it in three positions, and then hope that it worked because if I turn my wireframe on, you'll notice that right now the ball's wireframe is vertical, which means if this robot grabs it at this position, it's actually at an angle in the robot jaw. And because this position on the small box is going to be lower, it's unlikely that the ball position in the jaws will be identical to this position when I set it down. So the easiest way to mimic that would be move forward till the ball is being touched by the jaw and then we will duplicate this first ball in this position and while the robot is in this grab position we're going to parent the second ball to the robot. Now I've got this handle that has the clamp control. I'm going to use it to be the value that I constrain ball to. So I will select the handle, select ball to, and then I'll go into the constrain menu and parent. And what that does is now ball two is always constrained to this handle up here. And as I move forward, you can see that it stays there and that when I get to frame 30, it lines back up perfectly with ball one. And that's perfect. However, I don't really want to be able to see this ball at all until we've gotten down here and we're ready to move the robot away. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take ball one and we need it to stay visible all the way up until this grab position, which is frame 30. Ball one has a visibility channel. So on frame 30, I'm going to right click on the visibility channel and keyframe that selected to on. At frame 31, when I start moving away, I do not want to be able to see this anymore. So I'm gonna keyframe it to off. Now you can either type the words on and off in here or you can use zero for off and one for on in binary terms. So I'm gonna tell it to be off, right click and key. And so now ball one is not visible and what happens is we'll move to this position and then at frame 30, we see it at frame 31, we do not. You can see it turn off and on in the selection highlighting. Ball two, on the other hand, we do not want visible at all up until frame 31. So on frame 30, I'm gonna keyframe this one to be off so that ball one is visible all the way till frame 30. And then at frame 31, ball one disappears, in which case that's when we wanna see ball two. So I'm gonna turn its visibility back on and key. So what we now have is it moves forward. Notice we cannot see ball two. At frame 30, we're still looking at ball one. And at frame 31, we're now looking at ball two, but the positions have not changed. So now what I'm gonna do is move forward maybe to frame 60. And we're gonna move our robot to a new position. So I'm gonna go ahead and translate it back to zero. And then I'll just change some of these rotational values so that we can tell that things have changed. So I'll just keyframe a couple movements and then I'll drag select all of these handles and hit S. And we'll be able to see the robot essentially pick the ball up at this point. It's gonna move forward. Ball one's gonna disappear. Ball two is gonna show up and we're gonna move back. Now notice that we glitch through the box a little bit and that's okay. All that means is that we've got some rotational values that are dipping below because I keyed at 60 and I keyed at 30. And if I wanna change that, all I need to do is add a key in between. So if I go to say frame 40 and I animate a handle back up 
and then key all these, I will have now modified that. Now I am moving forward, grabbing and moving up before I move back down. All right, it's working great. So now we're gonna move over and set it down. So I'm gonna go to frame 90 and I'll get this set up so that it can set the ball down. So I'm gonna rotate the base rotation handle. I also need to get this object closer to the box so we can actually sit it down. So I'm gonna move it forward and then start rotating these arms a little bit lower so that we can place the ball onto this box. Okay, so at this point, I'm just gonna kinda zoom in and dial this rotation value in so it looks like it's sitting down. Now, when I let go of ball two, notice that we've got this interesting rotation angle because the surface levels are not the same, my robot is not in the same position, but the ball was locked to these jaws. And I wanna make sure that the ball that gets left here has that rotational value. And in order to do that, what we'll do is while we're in this position on frame 90, we're gonna go ahead and duplicate this ball but we don't want it parent constrained. So we'll delete the constraint on the new ball. And then I also wanna make sure that all of these handles get keyed on frame 90. So I'll select all my animation handles and hit S. So they've been keyed. So now what I have is my robot starting vertical. Ball two is up here, but it's hidden. Ball one is here. Ball three is visible still. We animate over grab ball one, it disappears, ball two is visible. We animate our robot over and eventually we sit it down at frame 90. At frame 90, ball two should be visible. So I'm gonna go ahead and key that again. At frame 91, ball two should not be visible. So I will keyframe that to off. And we need to take ball three and it should be visible at frame 91 and not visible on frame 90. So we're gonna do this show hide trick again. Okay, <clears throat> so now what we have is only ball one visible. I move forward in time and ball one gets hidden. Ball two is now visible and I animate my robot over. Ball two gets hidden and now ball three is visible. And so the last thing that I'm gonna do is move my robot away from this position so that it looks like the ball gets left behind. So I'm gonna go ahead and just maybe sit it back to its home position. And maybe I'll make it look like the robot's going to sleep by just having it kind of fold up here. So I'll go ahead and just kind of clamp some of these values down and just make it look like it's going to sleep. Something like that. Go ahead and drag select all my handles and hit S. At this point, I can hit play and we can watch the result. Okay, now similar to what happened before, since I have my robot sitting the ball down and then folding up right here, we can see that the robot is glitching through the box. So somewhere between frame 90 and between frame 120, we need to make sure that this gets moved up a little bit. And I can do that simply by grabbing this one piece that's breaking through the surface and changing a couple of these keyframes. I'll just drag select these handles and set one extra key. And so now we set the ball down and we lift up and away before we fold into a close. All right, so that basically is the premise of how we wanna do this. The only other thing that you might need to know is currently I'm using object-based rotation. And what that means is when this handle here gets rotated, this handle here maintaining its local orientation. World space orientation will never change. Y will always be up, X will always be left, right, and Z will be depth. And you can change that in your modeling toolkit um, or excuse me, not the modeling toolkit, but in your tool settings for rotation, if you double click on the rotation handle, you'll open your tool settings and you can see at the top, we've got axis, 
orientation. If this is set to world, notice that this handles orientation does not make sense. It will not rotate the direction that we really want this to work. If this is set to object, it will make a lot more sense. Another way that we can do this is since we're dealing with rotation, the E key is what turns rotation on. And if you hold the E key down and your left mouse, you will notice that we can go object, world, custom, and all these other options here, component, gimbal, and this is another quick way that you can swipe into object-based. But you're going to want to make sure that your handles are in object-based rotation for this kind of an animation. All right, so now that you know that, I'll hit play one more time. You can watch the ball get picked up and set down. And essentially, that is the gist of what we're trying to do here. All right, thanks for watching. Hope this was helpful, and we'll see you in the next one.